Hi there. Well, what we're going to look at is section 4.2. And what we did uh, in section 4.1 is we found a common point, if any, or point at some times if they're the same line, um, given two equations. Now, this we, you can use three equations with these. You can use four equations where you try to find a common point between all four equations or three equations. Normally, we just stick to three or under. And um, in this case and in this chapter, we'll just be doing two. But what we're going to look at is two other methods that are more accurate, especially if your point of intersection is a fraction. It'd be difficult to do that graphically. So the graphically just kind of gave you a picture of what we'll be doing. So what we're going to start with, well, here, let's look at this. Um, there are some steps. And the first method um, we'll be doing substitution, and then we'll look at elimination. To me, it depends upon the equations and what they look like, if you should use substitution, or is it better to use elimination? Most of the story problems are set up to use elimination method, but um, sometimes, you know, not, not always. And we'll do one example where you use substitution on a story problem. Well, let's look at our first, well, here, let's go ahead and go through our steps. Choose one of the equations and solve for one of the two variables. Sometimes this is already done. Really, to use this method, I um, always pick, I use this method if this is already done. Otherwise, I use the elimination method. But you can decide. It's up to you. You just you don't have to use the method they tell you to use. You just need to make sure you find the common point or points, if any. And you and you you have, we're going to give you some different tools um, in order to solve those. All right, so then using the other equation, replace the variable you solved for in step one with the expression you found um, in step one. You should now have an equation with just one variable in it. You know, this probably sounds a little confusing, and we'll look at and some examples that'll clear this up. But before when we were graphing, we knew that if it was parallel, you know, we could tell, we could look, they had a common slope when we graphed them. We knew that this was no solution. But how are you going to know if you're using these other methods that it's no solution? Well, we'll do some examples, but what you do is you come down where the X's drop out or the Y's all drop out, either one, and you have a false statement. Negative two does not equal, I'm gonna put it does not equal seven. If you get a false statement like this where the X's and Y's have dropped out, then you have parallel lines and there are no solution. Without graphing it, you know they're parallel. Now, if you get an identity, an identity means that something is equal to some, you, they're, both sides are equal to each other. Um, if you were to subtract two X from both sides in some, in, as an example in this one, you get negative three equals a negative three. That's true. Negative three does equal a negative three or a negative four does equal a negative four. So when the variables drop out and they add up to zero, there aren't, there aren't any either on the left or on the right, you have infinitely many solutions. So we have an infinite number of solutions if it's a true statement. This means that they're actually the same line, all right? And so we have an infinite number of solutions. So if for some reason you end up with one solution, you plug the number you got, I'm in step three, okay? Um, well, it depends on if it's no solution or, or um, um, infinitely many solutions, or if you're actually able to solve it, back into the expression you got in step one to get the value of the other variable. So I, I wanna caution you, and we're gonna go through some examples that a lot of times they'll get, they'll find out what the X is equal to and people will stop. But this, your solution is an ordered pair. So you'll have to find the X and the Y 
for your solution. And that's what this step four is about. It's about putting the one you find back in to find the other. So, uh oh, rats. Oh, there it is. Okay, sorry. I, it wasn't registering. I thought something was going on with my visual, my um, uh, visualizer. Okay, so again, make sure that you find both points and not just stop at one. Uh, you know, but Pearson's gonna let you know. So that, that, that part's nice. All right, let's go ahead and go through an example. And this is probably gonna help more than anything. Okay, in looking at this right here, I have two choices, either using the substitution method or the elimination method. Well, we don't know the elimination method, but here the substitution, I always use the substitution method if in one of the equations, one of the variables is by itself. If one of the equations and one of those variables is by itself, I use substitution. So what we're saying is that the y in both of these equations will be equal when you have a common point. So I'm going to put what y is equal in for this y. So I'll take this equation x plus y equals seven, and I'm going to substitute this in, since y is equal to that, I'm gonna put it in for this y right here. So these y's are equal, and this y is equal to this, so I'm going to substitute, instead of a y in this equation, I'm gonna put what it's equal to. So you're really using both equations, and it's important that you use both equations. We'll have x plus, instead of y, I'm going to put 3x minus 1, because y and 3x minus 1 are equal. So I can substitute that in. So now I have, I've created an equation using both of these and a substitution. I've created an equation with only one variable. So I can now solve the equation for the x-coordinate of the intersection. All right, so we'll go ahead and we'll solve that. Combining like terms on this left before you start to move stuff, make sure that you've simplified the left or simplified the right. And now get the x by itself. Okay, and divide by four. So x then is equal to two, keeping the numbers pretty simple. Don't stop, because I know I need an ordered pair. I've got the x for my solution. Put the two back up either into this equation or this equation. A lot of times it's easier to put it into the equation that had the variable by itself. It doesn't matter. You're going to get the same answer because it's a common point with both equations. So rather than use the top one, I'm gonna take y equals three x minus one. I'm going to substitute that right there three times two, y equals six minus one, y equals five. You can check this with the other equation, does two plus five equals seven? Yes, it does. All right, so you take a variable that's by itself and you put whatever it's equal into the other equation you replace that variable. And so we replace the y with a three x minus one. Then you solve it for x, and then you substitute it back up into either one of these, it doesn't matter, either one, and find the y. So just remember that when you're doing these, well here, I'll just, I don't like that x and y underneath. That when you're solving these, your answer is an ordered pair unless it's no solution or an infinite number of solution. So it's an ordered pair. Now let's look at B. 
B is one I would not use the substitution method on. I would use the elimination method. It would be very simple. But I'm going to go ahead and go through substitution. And we might come back to this one and look at the elimination method so that you can see how much easier the elimination method would be with this one. But some people get stuck with, they really like substitution. And um, like I say, I just look to see what's given if I'm going to use the substitution or not. But this, this is... Um, takes into account the step one. Um, choose one of the equations and solve for one of the two variables. So we'll, we'll go ahead and do that. It, it doesn't hurt. So the variable I'm going to solve for is this one. I always look for a variable that's by itself. Um, well, excuse me, that has a one in front of it. That's the variable you want to pick. If it if you if there none of them have a one in front of it, I wouldn't use substitution, I'd use elimination. But in this case, it's not too horrible to get that X by itself so that it looks like this one where the Y was by itself. So let's get the X by itself. Um, I'll, I'll go ahead and go over here, X minus two Y. I'm gonna have to move that over, add two Y. So X equals two Y plus six. So now that we know what X is equal to in the top equation, we have that variable by itself. In this equation, all whatever the X is equal to, which in this case is 2Y plus 6, I'm going to put this right here. I'm going to substitute that back in, which means we'll have 3, but instead of an X, the X is equal to that. So I'll put that in instead. This is a good one to look at. What if we have you know, a multiple here? Um, like with the Y, we didn't have a number in front of the Y, we just put it in. But in this case, when we put this in here for the X, you have to use parentheses around that whole thing. Then we still have the plus two Y equals four. So we have 3x plus 2y equals 4. It's just that the x is equal to the 2y plus 6. Now we solve it for y. Well, in order to solve it, you have to use the distributive property. 6y plus 18 plus 2y equals 4. All right. 8y plus 18 equals 4 subtract 18, I did not want a fraction, but I might get it as long as I copied everything down, right? 2y plus six, I'm gonna go back through this because I don't really want a fraction. Yep, looks like we're gonna get a fraction. Oops, sorry, minus 18. Just gonna go in through my head, make sure I didn't make a little mistake happens. Eight y equals a negative um, 12, 14, negative 14, and divide by eight. y then is equal to, I'm gonna reduce this fraction, a minus seven fourths. Mm, let me go through that. Um, positive four, because four X equals 10. I got five halves earlier. So I wanna make sure that 18, subtract 18, eight Y, hmm, okay. Sorry, four X is 10. Oh, that's why. Okay. So we get a negative seven fourths for our Y. Now you see, you could see that would be hard to find on a graph. It would be difficult. But um, in this case, Y is equal to a negative seven fourths. Now, don't stop there because it has to be an ordered pair. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this equation that X equals, just like I did this other equation, Y equals, and I'm going to put this right here. So I have x equals 
I'm going to use this one. Do I have to? No. You could have put the Y here and solved it for X. You could have put the Y here and solved it for X. You, we're going to put the Y here because the X is already solved for. So we have X equals 2, negative 7 fourths plus 6 because y is equal to that. And now we'll go ahead and multiply that out, working a little bit with fractions, a negative seven halves plus six. I multiplied those together. And six is 12 halves. So then negative seven halves plus 12 halves is a positive five halves. So our point of intersection is our x is 5 halves, our y is a negative 7 fourths. There's your answer. All righty. And again, this was using the substitution. Let's do another one. Well, yeah, we'll just we'll just look at another one. You can always review it yourself. Okay, now here, just like with the graphical method, it is possible to have problems with no solution. We kind of talked about that earlier. Um, the lines are parallel. When you're graphing them, they have the same slope. And problems with infinitely many solutions, okay, they're the same line when you graph them. That's the graphical. Now here, remember that if the variables drop out and it's no, you get a false statement like three does not equal 10. Okay, it'll be a false statement. And the variables have to drop out. It's not going to be like x equals zero because sometimes x equals zero. The variables themselves have to drop out. And I guess, you know, we'll, we'll show that here. And in order to be the, the same line or an infinite number of solutions, you come up with a true statement like five equals five. The variables, then they drop out like you had two X and a two X. And when you added a negative two X to both sides, the variables dropped out. All right, well, let's go ahead and look at this. We're gonna use substitution in both cases. In this case, we have the Y by themselves. I'll show you how to do that. And in this case, we have the y by itself. So these are great for substitution. Um, what I'll do is I'm going to take this y and make it this, okay? Because y is equal to that. So instead of a y, I know that y is equal. In this equation, all the y's become this. So we will have 5 halves x minus 3 equals five halves x plus four. So I put this right there. That y became this. Now let's solve it. Well, there's nothing, you can't simplify the left. We've done that before in the last example, last two examples, and there's nothing to do on the right. You can't combine like terms. So we'll start to move things. I'm gonna move the variables first. So I'm going to add a negative 5x, and I'm going to just move it to the left. That's 0, and that's 0. That's what I mean by they drop out. They have to match. All right. So then we have a minus 3 equals 4. Minus 3 is left on the left, and the 4 is left on the right. Well, that's a false statement. Negative three does not equal four, which means this is a no solution. And if you were to graph these, the lines would be parallel. Okay, if you were to graph them. And of course, you can look at that. And you know, you don't even have to go through this because the y's, um, because you're solved for y, both equations, this is the slope intercept method they both have the same slope in front of their x. So when you solve it for y, it's in the slope intercept method. This one hits the y axis at four with a slope of five halves. This hits the y axis at a negative three with a slope of five halves. So they have the same slope. 
But if you didn't recognize that, and if they're both not solved for Y, um, and, and then you end up solving it and coming down to a false statement, it's no solution. They're parallel. All right, let's look at the other one. The Y is by itself. So I'm going to take this, whatever Y is equal to, and put it in for that Y. So we have 2. Instead of a Y, I'm going to put 3X plus 2 because they're equal. And um, excuse me, i got to plug in my computer real quick before it dies on me. Okay. So here I put in this for the Y. Then I have my equal, 6X plus 4. And now I'll multiply this through. 6X minus 4. Whenever you have that, it's 2 times Y, so it's 2 times everything that Y is equal to. 6X plus 4. Kind of a heads up. Looks like the X's match. So that when I subtract a 6X, I get a negative, oops. Oh, why did I put a negative four? It's a positive four. A positive times a positive is a positive. So we end up with these dropping out, they're gone. So we have four equals four. And four equals four is a true statement. So in this case, we have an infinite number of solutions. And I, there's one other step when you get to your 1400s, and I believe that Pearson stops by just saying you have an infinite number of solutions. They're the same line. If you were to graph these, they would be the same line. If you were to divide this by two, everything, to get the y by itself, you would have y equals 3x plus 2. So a match. Lines are matching. OK, we're going to come back to the story problems. I have these two at the bottom here. I want to look at the elimination method, and then we'll come back. Because I don't want to always use the substitution. Sometimes they're set up easier for the elimination method. So now what we're going to do in looking at the elimination method, and the reason I'm using this method rather than the substitution is if you look at the equations and how they're presented, you've got the x's lined up. You've got the y's lined up, equals, and then the number lined up. So to me, this is set up perfectly for the elimination method. And the elimination method, what you want to do is you want to pick one of the variables. It doesn't matter which one. And you want to make it so that when you add these two equations together, that it one of the variables drops out. Sometimes you have to multiply one of the equations by a number so that the variables are equal and opposite. You want them to be equal and opposite. So when you add, they add up to zero. Sometimes you have to multiply both equations by a number and um, so that you end up with equal and opposite. So I'm hoping that we'll look at looking at these. Mm, I don't know if I don't see one where we have to multiply them both but you can multiply both of them. If not, I might come up with one just to demonstrate that idea. But you see, if you look at this A, this A is a perfect example of the elimination method. Look at the Ys. If you look at the Ys, this is a positive three and this is a negative three, perfect. They're equal in number, equal in value, and they're opposite in sign. So when you add them, add them together, uh, three plus a negative three is zero. That's what you want. You've eliminated the Ys. So we literally add these together. We didn't have to multiply by anything so that one of them, so that they're equal or opposite one of the variables. All right, this gives us six X, adding those, those drop out equals, and then you add these together here and you get 30. So you added the X's, the Y's drop out, your equal sign, and then you add those together. So that's pretty easy. Divide by six, X equals 
five. Now we're not done yet because again, we want an ordered pair for a solution. We now have the X, we need to find the Y. It, so it doesn't matter at this point, which one you use to find the Y. Because again, it's a common point, whether or not you use one of these lines or the other line, it, you're gonna get the same Y value. They, at that intersection, they have the same X and Y value. I like to use one, I like to use the top one because it's all addition. And on, now there's nothing wrong with working su with subtraction, but I'm gonna put my X in the top equation. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy the top equation again. And you could have used the bottom one. I'm gonna put my five in for that. Two times five and 10. Try to write a little bit smaller so I have room. So you get the Y by itself. Subtract 10. 3Y equals 3. Divide by 3. Y equals 1. 3 over 3 is 1. So that's my point of intersection. So if I were to put 5 in for X and 1 in for Y, I'm going to get 17. If I put five in for X and one in for Y, I'm going to get 13. It works in both equations. Let's try another one, let's try B. Okay, now looking at the equation, it looks like, wow, it's set up for elimination method because one of the variables is not by itself. So we're gonna go ahead and use the, um, el the elimination method. Looking at the Y's again, they're close to being equal and opposite. They're equal, but they're not opposite. So I could multiply this by a negative one. And as long as you do that to every term, you can do that. Do you see by multiplying by a negative one that now we have a positive three and then this will become a negative three so that when I add them, I get zero, right? Some of you may say, okay, what if I multiplied by a negative two? You can do that. If you multiply by a negative two instead, the Y's won't drop out, but the X's will, because you'll have a negative two here. So you can make a choice. Do you want to eliminate the X's? Multiply by a negative two. Do you want to eliminate the Y's? Multiply by a negative one. Maybe I'll demonstrate both of them. Let's finish with our negative one. So the first equation, I'm not going to multiply any, but, um, anything to it. You could. You're not limited to just multiplying the bottom or by one of them by something. And then I'm going to multiply through a negative one. And I'll show you where a lot of people make a mistake. This times a negative one is a negative x. Negative one times three is a negative three. People for, forget to take this times the last term. Don't you make sure you take negative one times the seven or whatever you're multiplying by. So it's every term in the equation. Now, we, now that it's set up and ready to add them together so that these drop out. So you end up with one X, two and a negative one is one X equals Eight plus a negative seven is one. X is one, you're done. Now to find the Y coordinate, you can put it back into this top equation. You can put it into this one before you multiplied, or you can put it into this one after you multiplied. You'll get the same answer. Let's put it into this equation right here that, um, before we multiply it. So I'm gonna put it into X plus three Y. I chose this one, put right there and subtract one, three Y equals six, divide by three Y equals two. Alrighty. So my point of intersection is one, two. I'll just write that down here. All right. 
Now, again, you could have multiplied by a negative two instead if you wanted to eliminate the X's instead of the Y's. So we're gonna take our, I'm just gonna rewrite them. I'm, oh, sorry, I don't need to put that there. That would be not correct. I'm going to multiply the bottom equation by a negative two. So the top equation stays the same. And the bottom equation, negative two times one, negative two times three, negative two times seven. Don't forget to take the negative two times the seven. Common mistake. You see now these drop out. So I end up with a negative three Y when I add these two equations together, adding down, adding like terms. And then this right here is a minus six. So then when you divide by a negative three, y is equal to two, which is what we got over here, y is two. And then you would put the two back in and solve it for x. So yeah, there's choices here on what you want to eliminate. You know, like I say, it won't matter, eliminate the x's here or eliminate the y's by making them. You see, we made the x's equal but opposite by multiplying by a number. Here we made the y's equal in, in number but opposite so that when you add them together, they drop out. Let's look at another one. Here we have, um, let's see, what do we want to eliminate? Okay, if you wanted to eliminate the x's, you'd have to make this 15. You could multiply this one by maybe a negative five and multiply this one by a positive three. You see how that's, that's not the easiest way, but you could. So if you multiply by a negative five, you get a negative 15, all of them, larger numbers. If you multiply everything by three, you get a positive 15, multiply them all by a positive three, so that when you add them, the X's drop out. But I think instead of multiplying by a negative five and a positive three, I am going to eliminate the Y's by multiplying, since they're already, they're already opposite, I could multiply this one by a positive three to get a negative six there. So then the y's are equal and opposite, but you could do the x's, that's fine. So let's leave the first one alone in this case. And we'll multiply this one, 15x minus six y, and then uh, multiplying that through, you're gonna get 42. All righty, don't forget to take the three times the 14. Okay, so now we're going to add these together. We're gonna come up with um, 18, and this is going to be 36 because the Y's drop out. Okay. When you add them together, the Y's drop out. So then divide by 18, x equals two. So to finish, you'll put the two back up into either one. I think I'll use the top one. Three x plus six y equals a negative six. You could use the five x minus two y equals 14. It won't matter. Put the two in right there. Six plus six Y equals a negative six. Um, subtract six, subtract six. Oops, it's a funny looking six. There we go, six Y equals a negative 12. So we have six Y equals a negative 12, divide by six, Y equals a negative two. So the answer is two, negative two. That's our point of intersection. So if you were to put these X 
five times two minus two times a negative two, putting them back in here, you'll get 14. So I always like to double check my work, so that looks good. All righty. So again, we just multiplied this top one by a posit positive three so that we had a positive six and a minus six. So they drop out, eliminating a variable. Let's look at this next one. Um, if you want to eliminate the x's, we haven't done that. Let's eliminate the x's. So you could multiply this by four. Okay. Oh, and it looks like if we want to eliminate the y's, hmm. Let's just go ahead and go through this whole thing, even though we probably know what the answer is. If I multiply the top equation by eight, I'll get a positive eight X, and this is a negative eight X. So doing that, I'll have eight X plus 12 Y equals 24. The bottom equation stays the same, I just copied it, drops out, drops out. So we have zero on the left and zero on the right. This is a true statement. So we have an infinite number of solutions. So in other words, these are the same line. They have a lot of, not, um, an infinite number of points that work in both. All right, so there's your, um, elimination method. So we're going to go back to that page from 4.2 and we're going to look at the story problems and answer some of those. And then I'll do another video with more of the story problems for 4.3, but this will get you started. Now, remember when you're doing a story problem, each sentence is its own equation. So we have two angles are supplementary. We have the period here. So we're gonna make an equation from this sentence. Two angles are supplementary. Supplementary means they add up to 180, in case you forgot. Complementary is 90. We have two angles, X plus Y equals 180. All right, we're done with the first sentence, we've translated it. Let's look at the next sentence. One angle, and it doesn't tell you you know, which angle, so it, it wouldn't matter. It doesn't say, well, well, we'll do one where you actually, it does matter which one you pick. But we have one angle, let's pick X, is, is is equal, 30 more than twice the other. All right, so again, it's just a matter of translating. And remember that when you have like words like less than, or subtracted from, you have to switch the order. But more than, you don't have to switch the order. But less than, you would have to have put the 2y in front of the 30. Just kind of keep that in the back of your mind for later. Okay, I've got two equations. So, and again, one equation came from this sentence, and the other equation came from this sentence. Now we're going to solve them. What method? Well, looking at this, let's use substitution because this X is by itself. So I'm gonna take what the X is equal to and put that in for this X right here in the other equation. So instead of having X plus Y, I'm going to have 30 plus two Y, then plus the Y equals 180. And then we solve it. 30 plus 3y, again, I simplified the left before I start to move. Subtract 30. So 3y equals 150. Divide by three, it looks like y is 50. So there's one of my angles, 50 degrees. Now you can put, you can either put this right here or you can put this right over here, all these arrows, hope it's not too confusing. All right, so I can either put the Y in here or the Y in here. Let's put it in here. X equals 30 plus two times 50. 
So I put it right here instead of moving over to this one. So I'll erase that. And we have x equals 30 plus 100. x is 150. Oh, excuse me, 130. I'm thinking 150. So those are your two angles, 130 and 150. And Pearson will say the larger angle is, and then you put 130, 130 degrees. The smaller angle is, and leave you a blank, for the 50. You don't write them as an ordered pair necessarily here when you're, when you're doing these story problems. Perfect. And again, they add up to 180. That's pretty easy to see. Let's look at another one. The difference between two numbers is 18. There's our first sentence. Difference means subtract. So I'm going to take two numbers and I'm going to subtract them and I'm going to get 18. Now, <clears throat> there's our, we're done with that. Now let's move on to our next sentence. They're standalone. All right, so don't try to put the 18 into this next sentence. All right, these stand alone. Twice the smaller. Okay, now, which one is the smaller number? Well, if you subtract two numbers and you get a positive number, this one will have to be the larger number and this is the smaller number in order to get a positive. Like you could take, you know, 20 minus two gives you a positive 18. So that's kind of how you tell. You look at this to see which one is the smaller. This is the larger, that's the smaller. So twice the smaller number plus three times the bigger number is, remember, is equal, is 74. So I translated that one. I guess I kind of had to reason through with this first one, which was the larger and which was the smaller. And you can always write it off to the side. X is larger. Y is smaller. And when you subtract a larger minus a smaller, you'll get a positive number. Okay, I don't have, a, I don't have an X by itself or a Y by itself. I'm going to use the elimination method. So I'm just gonna put these, stack these. I've got X minus Y equals 18. I'm gonna put the three X first plus two Y equals 74, okay? So here uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, eliminate the Y's because they're already opposite. So all I have to do is multiply that top equation by a two, and I'll have a negative two y on in up here and a positive two y here. So I'm going to multiply this equation by two. So it becomes two x minus two y equals thirty six. And then I'm going to keep this one the same. I'm not going to have to multiply it by anything, even though you could. So here, when I add them together now, I've got them lined up, I multiplied the top by a negative two. And again, sometimes you may have to multiply the bottom by something as well in order to make it like six and a negative six or 12 and a negative 12. Here, I get five X equals 110 because the y's fall out. Um, divide by five. X is 22 when I divide those. So one of my numbers is 22. But what's the other number? What's the smaller number? Well, I'm gonna put this back up into this equation rather than this one. I could, but it's a little bit larger numbers, a couple extra steps. So X is 22 minus Y equals 18. So now I go to here, subtract 22. Um, y equals 
okay? Y equals, um, and you have a negative Y, excuse me, equals a negative four, divide by a negative one. So Y then is equal to four. So the larger number is 22 and the smaller number is four. So if you put them back into your first equation, 22 minus four is 18. If you take two times four plus three times 22, you'll get 74. So they work. Okay, perfect. Now let's go to our 4.3 and, and um, solve those. We'll read through them and then we'll pick a method to solve them once we have the equation. A bakery sells 175 loaves of bread each day, some white and the rest whole wheat. Because of a regular, um, because of a regular order from a sandwich shop, the bakery consistently bakes nine more loaves of white bread than whole wheat. How many loaves of each type of bread do they bake? Okay, let's take our first sentence that we have up here. A bakery sells 175 loaves of bread each day, some white, some whole wheat. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and write X is going to be the white and Y is going to be the whole wheat. If they would have had different W's, I may have used the first letter. Um, but in this case, I'll go X is white and Y is whole wheat. Okay, so I know that they sell 175 loaves. What that means is that if I add these together, I get 175. There's one of the equations. We're done with that one. We just need one more. Two equations with two unknowns. Because of a regular order for a sandwich shop, the bakery consistently bakes nine more loaves of white bread than whole wheat. Okay. There's no is, you know, so it's a little bit harder to read from left to right and translate it. But I do know that whenever you want to find out how many more of something than you have of something else, you subtract. So if I have nine more loaves of white bread than whole wheat, that means that when I subtracted the white and the whole wheat, I got nine. All right. So now we have our two equations. Okay. I know that I have more of those. And then when I subtract them, I end up with nine. So that's a way of translating this one. It's a little bit different than what we normally do. Normally we're given a total and then you're given a sentence with the is like we had on the last one. But um, if you come across this, now you'll know that if you have more than something, you had to subtract to get that nine. This is so nice for elimination. The Y's are equal and opposite already. All you have to do is add them together. The Y's will drop out. 2X equals um, 184. Okay. Divide by two. Okay, the number of white loaves of bread, it looks like it's gonna be 92. I sell 92 loaves, or this bakery does. 92 loaves of white bread. So this is white. Now to find out how many whole wheat, I'm gonna, I think I'll use this top equation. I don't have to mess with a negative. So we have X plus Y equals 175. 92 plus Y equals 175. Subtract 92, subtract 92, y is equal to 83. So the whole wheat is 83. And those are your two answers. Okay, so we're translating sentence by sentence and then solving them depending upon elimination or, or the um, substitution. Let's look at one more and be done here. The state of Wyoming is in the shape of a rectangle with a perimeter of 1,280 miles. The width of the state is 90 miles less than the length. Find the length and width. Well, I like to have a picture. 
So I'm gonna draw a little picture of a rectangle. We have a length and a width. Let's take our first sentence. The perimeter um, is 1,280. Remember the perimeter is when you add up all the sides. So we have 2L plus 2W equals 1,280. All right, there's our um, first equation from our first sentence. Let's go to the next one. The width of the state is, okay. So we can, you know, it looks like this is set up to just read it from left to right and write our equation, translate it. The width of the state, so here, the width of the state is 990 miles less than the length. All right. We come across less than. Less than is a subtraction, but because you have to, um, instead of reading it from left 90 minus L, you have to read this backwards. So you're taking the length and you're subtracting 90. Okay, that's how, that's how we interpret the less than. So the length subtract 90. So just kind of keep that in mind that with less than you do have to switch the order. So now how are we gonna solve it? Well, this one looks like it's, it's set up for substitution. So we'll take this because W is equal to that. This W is going to become L minus 90 because all the W's, these W's represent the same thing. So if this one's equal to this, so is this one. 2L plus two, parentheses, have to have that. Okay, out of the way. Now we use our distributive property. L minus 180, multiplying two into every, oops, equals, into the um, parentheses. Combine 4L minus 180 equals 1280. So now you can add 180 to both sides. We're going to get the L by itself, just some basic algebra here. Equals 1460. Divide by four. L then is equal to 365 miles. Okay, there's our length. Yeah, I guess you can see that. Okay, move it up a little bit. So there's the length. So what's the width? I normally go back into the equation that had the variable by itself that we substituted in. So W equals L, yeah, that shows up, minus 90. So W equals 365 minus 90, so W is 275. So there's our length and there's our width. It's almost a square. Hmm. Okay, all right, well, if you're having any questions, I'm gonna go through a few more of the story problems, which I believe is 4.3. I haven't really looked at it much yet. And, um, and then you can finish up this chapter four, and then we'll head into chapter nine. All right. Let me know if you have any questions. Thank you. Bye-bye.